When you are beginning astrophotography, it can be overwhelming to choose from the massive list of objects that are out there. In this video, we are going over my top seven June to August picks for deep sky astrophotography for beginners. And I'm gonna use Stellarium to show you how to find them just in case you don't have a go-to mount. So there is a few criteria that I'm going to follow for this list. And the first one is that it rises shortly after dark. It doesn't require a whole lot of focal length, so you can use a camera or a small telescope. And it's not going to be setting before dawn. Moving into the first one, we have the Lagoon Nebula. Now, crazily enough, this is one of the few nebula you can actually see with the naked eye if you are under dark skies. This nebula is located in Sagittarius, and here's how to find it. Look for the teapot in Sagittarius. From the top left of the handle of the teapot, go up through the top about the same distance between the stars, and you're on top of it. One more thing to note, this nebula is primarily hydrogen alpha. You'll want to put a few hours in if you're using a stock DSLR with no modifications. And that goes for every nebula on this list that is primarily hydrogen alpha. But, you know, that's kind of the point, being under the stars, right? Go ahead and put that time in. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. Now let's move into the North America and Pelican Nebula Complex. Now there is just so much versatility here. You can do just the North American Nebula, you can do just the Pelican Nebula, you can go wide and get them both, you can go deep and get the Cygnus Wall. There's so much to choose from here. All right, so in order to find the North America and Pelican Nebulae, you want to look for the Summer Triangle. Now, the Summer Triangle is comprised of the three brightest stars in the constellations of Lyra, Cygnus, and Aquila. Now, we want to look for Deneb, which is basically the feet of Cygnus. Remember, Cygnus is a swan, so the longer part is the head of the swan. So we want to look for Deneb and then look a little bit east of Deneb and look for 57 and 56 Sig. Now, doing that puts us basically right on top of the entire complex. And from here, you can make your choice as to whether you want to go wide or if you want to just do the Cygnus wall. Whatever your choice is, it's up to you. I'm moving away from Nebulae for a second, we are going over to the Hercules Cluster. Now this one is another naked eye object, and under dark enough skies, you can see it. Now while commonly taken with longer focal lengths, an argument could be made about it being bright enough for a Barlow, which is usually discouraged in deep sky astrophotography. Stay tuned later this year, I'm gonna try to make that argument and we'll figure it out. This one is located in Hercules. Here's how you find the Hercules cluster. Again, you wanna go with the summer triangle, but this time we're gonna draw a line between Deneb and Vega. Now we're gonna keep going past Vega and the constellation Lyra over to the keystone of the constellation Hercules. On the opposite side from the constellation Lyra of the Keystone, the Hercules Cluster is located in there. All right, now we're gonna move over to something that is a spectacular wide field object. And this one is Rho Fuki. Let me see, did I pronounce that right? I think I pronounced that right this time. Hold on, let's look. Oh, Fuki. Ah, there it is. Anyway, this one is a favorite this time of year because it is one of the most photographed objects in the night sky. And the reason for that is that it is just so colorful and there's so much to work with. There's, you know, the pinks, the yellows, the blues, the dust lanes. There's just a lot to work with on this one. Again, you can go really wide and get a nice wide field shot and include some of the Milky Way core or you can get zoomed in and take a shot of M4, the globular cluster that's there. You can get in on Antares and just all of the various aspects and just get real close and get a lot of detail out of it. This one is located in Scorpius and this one is probably the easiest one to find. If you look for Antares in the constellation Scorpius, you found it because Antares is part of this. Like I said, easy, right? So we're gonna go a little bit further up in the galaxy core, past the Lagoon Nebula, and go to the Eagle Nebula. And this is another great choice to start with because you can start kind of wide around 300 millimeters, but then as you get deeper, you can also get in on what is known as the Pillars of Creation. And there's just a lot of cool detail you can pull out of this one. But if you start really wide, you can also include the Omega Nebula 
Nebula, which is also close by. So the Eagle Nebula is located in the constellation Serpent. Now to find it, you'll want to again look at the teapot in Sagittarius, but then look a little bit above it for the constellation Scutum. I believe that's how that one's pronounced too. At the bottom of Scutum, you see the two stars there, and you, what you want to do is just draw a line from east to west, and just go a little bit to the west of the bottom right star, and there it is. All right, before we keep going, I did mention a couple things you could see with the naked eye. Have you seen them with the naked eye? If so, let me know down in the comments below. But let's move on to the Cat's Paw Nebula. So this one is located a little bit south of Rofuki, and this one, it's very easy to see where the name came from on this one. Now this one does require going with at least 300 millimeters or more in your focal length. But if you go wide, you can also get the nearby Lobster Nebula. Now the Cat's Paw Nebula is located in Scorpius, but this one is on the tail of Scorpius instead of the head and the claws. So what you want to do to find it is look for the stars Mula and Shaula. Draw a line that is the same distance between the two past Shaula. From there, the Lobster is on the east side of the line and the Cat's Paw is on the west. And like I said, looking at the nebula, it is very easy to see where the name came from, right? All right, and moving on to the last object, we have the Veil Nebula. Now we're gonna go back to the Summer Triangle here, and this one, it, there's a ton to do with this. So you can get in real tight on each specific part of this nebula complex, or you can stay wide and just get the whole thing. Now there are three different things to work with. There's the Eastern Veil Nebula, the Western Veil Nebula, or Pickering's Triangle. This one has so many different colors to work with. It is an amazing object to image for beginners. To find it, you wanna go back to Cygnus and then go to Sidir, the middle of the Cygnus constellation and then go east down to Aljana, moving another two degrees past Aljana, and you're on top of the Veil Nebula. Like I said, this one has some amazing detail and color to work with, so it is a great beginner object. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.